college rivalries are terrific. Elon right now is kind of hurting for college rivalries because we just switched conferences. If I had said a year ago, in Elon, you guys are on the basketball, who, who would have been your number one competitor in basketball, your big rivalry? Davidson. Davidson. I would say that, wouldn't you say that? Yeah. But see, now we're going to be in different conferences. Alan, I know you're a big, you AD at Elon, but where'd you go to undergraduate? Wake Forest. Wake Forest. So of all the people that you would like to see Wake Forest beat, who would that be? North Carolina. North Carolina. I'm so surprised. <laughs> uh, do we have any Carolina people in here? Okay. So who, who would the one school you want to beat? Who would that be? Duke. Duke. You would like to beat Duke? Okay. You know, my husband played basketball at Duke. He was captain, and the reason he got to play was this guy named Bob Sharp threw him the ball. In. <laughs> My bestest friend over here from elementary and high school days, you were at Ball State. Who do y'all just want to beat more than anybody? Indiana State. Indiana State, I understand. <laughs> there is a rivalry <laughs> in North Carolina that you might not really know about involving Duke and anybody got not a North Carolina school. Kentucky. People in Kentucky dislike Duke immensely. Does the name Christian Leitner still ring a bell? Oh, <laughs> well, they hate. So, a, and, and it's a good rivalry. And so, not long ago, a year, maybe a year and a half, I was to speak in Frankfort, Kentucky, at a, a luncheon for breast cancer survivors. And I had been invited by the Kentucky's governor's wife, Jane Brashear. And so about a week before I was to go, my assistant, Tony, got a telephone call from someone in her office who said, the governor's wife would like to present Jeannie with a gift when she's finished speaking. And Tony said, well, that'd be very nice. That'd be very nice if you did that. They said, well, what they want to present is a Duke a shirt. And, and they, they said, we think that would be good because didn't her husband play at Duke? And Tony said, yeah, well, wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. She would have just spent 45 minutes speaking to a thousand women trying to get them to like her. Then if you, you bring out a Duke shirt and give it to her, that's not going to be funny. See, Jeannie likes to be funny. We don't think that'll be funny. They'll mumble, they might boo. And he said, well, I'll check with the governor's wife. And so Tony came to me and told me, I said, that would be awful, just awful. I hear I have them, I want to get them in my hand, palm of my hand if possible, and all of a sudden they come out there with a Duke shirt in front of Kentucky, I'll have to run for my car. <laughs> and in a few minutes, this young man from the governor's wife's office called back and said, I've talked to uh, uh, Ms. Brashear, and the governor's wife knows what she's doing. Tony said to me, governor's wife knows what she's doing. You're in for trouble that day. <laughs> it became a little theme in our office. Where am I staying in Frankfurt? Wherever the governor's wife wants you to stay. <laughs> I hope if they give me a shirt, it'll fit. She said, well, the governor's wife knows what she's doing. You know, you leave it alone. <laughs> so there were a thousand women there. And it came time for me to speak. And out of the corner of my eye, I could see a Kentucky basketball player, Mark Krebs, nice young man, standing holding this blue shirt, and it's Duke blue. And I thought, oh gosh, she's going through with it. She's going through with it. So I was into my speech, but I had this pit in my stomach thinking, oh, this is not gonna be funny. I'm gonna have to keep my sense of humor, practice what I preach, keep a sense of humor. And so this went on, and when I finished the speech, I looked and out came the governor's wife, Ms. Bashir, and she was smiling kind of had a mischievous smile on her face. And then out behind her, she said, I'd like to introduce Mark Krebs, a Kentucky basketball player. And then he gave me this shirt and instead of just handing it to me, he flipped it open and held it up to me. Hold this a minute.
For the benefit of the people on the CD, it went D-U-K-E, number one, but then they had marked off the D and marked off the E, leaving U-K, number one. I got in my car and my cell phone was ringing, and it was Tony. She said, what happened, what happened, what happened? Can you ever speak in Kentucky again? And I said, I gotta got get to the airport, and I'll call you when I get there, but suffice it to say right now, the governor's wife knows what she's doing. <laughs>